Thank you for calling Late Night Taco Delivery. If you are calling to place an order, unfortunately the store is closed due to the fact that we are about to record a podcast. We'll be closed for another half an hour-ish. If you're calling to listen to the show, congratulations, you are just in time. So kick back, relax, and enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome to Late Night Taco Delivery. Late Night Taco Delivery! Yeah! Little, little delay there, huh? <laughs> yeah, that was weird. I'm, oh well. I'm your host, Daniel Gill. And I'm Jonathan Knoll. And we're here to talk about nerd stuff. As always. As always. So how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing just fine. I actually finished uh, listening to all of Smodcast not too long ago, and hmm. uh, recently started going on to uh, uh, the Thrilling Adventure Hour. Ooh. Yeah. I, I've been Lo- interested in the Thrilling Adventure Hour. I know they have a uh, crossover with one of my favorite podcasts, uh, Welcome to Night Vale. I also really like Welcome to Night Vale. Uh, Thrilling Adventure Hour is just fun. Hmm. It's set up like old-time radio. Uh-huh. But each episode of the podcast doesn't follow just one uh, continuous storyline the way Night Vale does. Mm-hmm. It covers like five or six. There's uh, Beyond Belief, which is like the Thin Man meets Ghostbusters, except drunk. <laughs> There's Sparks Nevada, Marshall on Mars, which is just thoroughly enjoyable. Nice. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, Captain Laserbeam. Which is voiced, which who is voiced by John DiMaggio? Ah, huh, okay. Yeah, there are some really heavy hitters when it comes to voice acting in this show too. Hmm. Uh, uh, Jefferson Reed, Ace American. Okay. Who is voiced by Nathan Fillion? Really, they got some pretty big uh, acts on this thing, don't they? Oh yeah, Chris Hardwick is in an episode. For heaven's sake. I think Will Wheaton's involved as well. Yes. Will yes, Wheaton. He is. Indeed. <laughs> But yeah, I highly recommend it to everybody. All right, have a good very shot. good show. I mm-hmm. haven't really been ge- geeking out. I've been working too much. I'm taking a couple weekends off coming up here this weekend and the weekend afterwards. So I have been busting my ass at work. Uh, but I've had mm. I've had a chance to do a little bit of reading. Um, one of my favorite mini series is called Band of Brothers, mm-hmm. which is about a, the group of 101st Easy Company in uh, World War II, and it's based on a Stephen Ambrose book called Band of Brothers. Obviously enough. But right. I ended up finding uh, that Dick Winters, uh, Major Dick Winters, who is the leader of Easy Company through most of the war, actually wrote his own version of what happened, called Beyond, really? called Beyond the Band of Brothers. So I'm already familiar with the story, but it's interesting seeing it from a different point of view. Um, some different ideas and different stories that are, are he, he tells from what he saw. And, you know, come down, he, he says he, Stephen Ambrose did a fantastic job telling their story, but there's a couple things he wanted to clear up. So... There you go. I thought it was, it's well written. It's it's fun. The guy lived to be like in his 90s. I mean, he only died a couple of years ago. Good on him. Yeah, he had a good full life. Uh, he's one of those uh, soldiers who, after D, uh, the first day of D-Day, basically when things had settled down a bit, he went to his knees and prayed to God that if he survived this, all he wanted to do was find a little bit of farmland in Pennsylvania and live the rest of his life in peace. And after the war, that's exactly what he did. Good for him. Yep. So... Holy cow, we got a lot of news this week. Yes, I have a whopping 14 stories, which is, strangely enough, not as big as usual. But eh. uh, I don't know. I actually never got around to counting how many I have. Fair enough. I'll just keep going until they're all gone. All right. Uh, let's see. Well, let's start with the movie news. Okay, go for it. Uh, Rupert Wyatt is directing Channing Tatum's X-Men film, a.k.a. Gambit. Mm-hmm. Uh... uh I, I know I've mentioned this on the on the on the show before. Channing Tatum is freaking everywhere, <laughs> and he's going to be Gambit, and I love Gambit. I'm not sure how I feel about this. <laughs> yeah, I kind of liked uh, what was his name uh, Taylor Kitsch. 
Mm. He's one of the few things I actually liked about the uh, Wolverine movie. Yeah. yeah. But he's he was a good actor who went into a couple different movies, and they all tanked. So he's sort of been um, thrown to the yeah. wayside. I mean, and that's too bad. Yeah, really. He was in John Carter of John Carter, aka John Carter of Mars, um, right? And he was in a couple other movies, unfortunately. But they all just went. <laughs> so he just never got anywhere. But anyway, um, what's his name? Oh, sorry, Rupert Wyatt has directed uh, uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, mm-hmm. and that's all they say. Uh, it's being produced by Lewin, Lauren Schuler Donner. Reed Carolyn and Simon Kinsberg, and it's scheduled scheduled for release for October seventh, two thousand sixteen. So they better start filling it now. Great. Great. All, right. All right. I don't know if that's a shit that should not be, but <laughs> <laughs> that's not the shit I should I be. I was telling you about. Oh Christ! Well, I'm, right. I'm saving that for a while. Well, also in the movie news, uh, Chris Hemsworth has joined the Ghostbusters reboot as the receptionist. I uh, yeah. Is that who he's playing? Yeah. Okay, that's kinda, in, okay. I, we got one. I, I have to admit, that's kind of funny. Yes, that's a, that's a good spin of the trope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is going to be Annie Potts' character. Hmm. I. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. Good on him. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm not a huge. Fan. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm still gonna. I still have my reservations about this Ghost Searchers movies. Not just because it's uh. You know, a female Ghostbusters movie, but more along the lines of it's a remake of a movie that's so near and dear to my heart as a child. Makes sense to me. But at the same time, that's kind of a cool idea. I, I kind of like that. Hey, at least it's not being done by Disney. They don't own this one yet, man. It yet. <laughs> uh, you, you notice I actually left it open? Yeah, sadly enough. Mm. Uh, let's see. More movie news. Uh, Michael Myers to live again in Halloween Returns. Yeah, I saw that too. No, Ryan, no Rob Zombie this time. No Rob Zombie. Um, it's basically they're not sure. Uh, right now, it's just basically saying initially, officially announced today the production will start in July and Halloween returns a new big, big screen franchise entry following the notorious killer Mike Myers. Uh, the writers behind the Saw movies, uh, Marcus Dunstan and Patrick Mellon, have written the script, which is said to offer a terrifying new th- installment of the classic franchise originated by D- John Carpenter. Now, what's not being told, however, is it's not actually going to take care of... It's not going to take after the Rob Zombie sequel. Mm -hmm. It will follow the events of 1981's Halloween 2 and will attempt to pave a new continuity from there. And considering how many different continuities the Halloween movies have had, uh, why the fuck not? (laughs) See, I'm kind of sad, though, that they're doing um, Michael Myers this time, because that's that's not the original point of the Halloween movies. Yeah. The, the original point of the Halloween movies was to show was to kind of be uh, a Twilight Zone just for Halloween, right? Where each time we see a, a movie entitled Halloween or Halloween X number of that that it's going to be a new story, right? So it makes me sad, but at the same time I can see where the, why they're doing it. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I suppose we should mention something about Jurassic World. Uh, yeah. Five, it's very popular. Five, over half a billion movie, uh, over half a billion dollars in one weekend. Yeah. Damn. Uh huh. Just damn. Trust me, I've had Weird Al Yankovic's Jurassic Park running through my head all day because of this bloody movie. <laughs> I'm plotting on picking it up. I'm probably gonna try to catch it like uh, Thursday afternoon after work. Fair enough. Uh, go catch the uh, c- catch a, uh, a, a a matinee, but I don't know. I'm not that excited by the whole idea. Me either. I mean, the thing about Jurassic Park is that I've been lied to before. Mm-hmm. Jurassic Let's Park face two, it, three. two and three are not great. No, they can't touch the magic of the first one. First one's an amazing movie. Now I just exactly. I just want to point something out, and this is more being me thinking, oh god, that's hol- horrible but hilarious. Mm-hmm. In the trailers, I've seen this the scene with the little kid, the two boys in the the, the drivable pod, right? Uh, big clear plastic glass plot, pod or whatever it is, you know, mm-hmm. rolling around with the dinosaurs in their natural habitat. Yes. yes. What happens when they hit a giant pi- pile of dinosaur poo? Smudges. Smear. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, I doubt you'll see that in the movie version. <laughs> Yeah, but for Dan's fan fiction version, it'll happen. Mm. I'm just like, it just, 
Ew, but funny. But <laughs> ew. Uh, let's see. Speaking of Jurassic Park, did you see the uh, tweet from Joyce Carol Oates? No. About the uh, infamous picture of Steven Spielberg posing with the uh, dead Triceratops? No, I did not. Yeah, this picture has shown up a few times. It, it, it's Sp Steven Spielberg on the set from the original Jurassic Park. He's sitting there with a dead Triceratops uh, animatronic. Okay. And I, the last time it went really big and viral, it was a guy who was saying, Justice must be done. Because how dare this big game hunter take down this oh, beautiful creature? God, I do remember that. Yeah, it's the same picture, but now I, uh, Joyce Carol Oates, uh, a, re a reporter to be reductive, uh, posted on Twitter that I, uh, and this is I, and this I quote, so barbaric that this should still be allowed. No conservation laws in effect wherever this is. Uh, she later came out to say that it was a joke, but... Okay. Still, come on. This joke's been done. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Any more movie stuff here? Well, I actually took two in a row, so it's your turn again. Okay. Uh, you remember the X-Files revival? Yes. We have our first view, our first picture of Mulder and Scully back together again. Oh, cool! Do they have their arthritic hips and their the walkers now? <laughs> Not quite. Actually, in this picture, they're just sitting in a car. Ah. Mulder's got a beard now. Yep. I actually have a uh, a styrofoam skull which I use for my uh, wigs, and I actually did name it Mulder. <laughs> the truth is out there. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm just, I'm okay. I guess I'm okay with the X-Files thing, but... Mm, I don't know. I'm, Honestly, I'm not a huge... I, I love the show, but I think it ended as well as it could, and just let it go. I mean, the last time we yeah. saw Mulder and Scully, they were on a run from the, from the government. Um, are we going to see them, you know, having a... Re you know, Getting retribution, or are they going to be pulled back together? You know, back in. You know, do this job, and we'll forgive all all, all past sins and something. I don't Who know. knows? Yeah. Though I did like another thing about being bringing shows back. Uh, someone posted a rather amusing uh, musical parody of the song "I Want You Back," called "Bring oh. Called Bring Firefly Back." <laughs> And it's about a bunch of firefly firefly cosplayers breaking into Fo into the head uh, the head of Fox's uh, office and basically tearing up the place and screaming, "Bring Firefly back!" Nice. Uh, let's see. All right. Well, uh, sort of movie news. Um, and I really uh, this is a sad story, so I do apologize. This okay. is, it's been a bad week for people dying and, and sad stories and shit. Mm -hmm. um, Ernie Reyes Jr. Uh, actor needs a kidney transplant. Oh, goodness. Yeah, Ernie Reyes Jr. is said to be fighting for his life due to kidney failure at the age 43. Uh, he's best known to the... To fan, oh, he's, oh, it says best known to fans as Kino in 1991's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Views. Fuck you, man. I remember him from the 80s. <laughs> I remember from The Last Electric Night and Red Sonja. I mean... Yeah. I mean, those were his, you know, he's, but he's been working steadily for many years, and uh, mm -hmm. he's actually part of one of the first Westerners that ever got a chance to be on uh, Jackie Chan's stunt team, which is something. Yes. Uh, but, yeah, basically, they're trying to raise $75,000 and a GoFundMe to help pay Ernie's uh, medical bills. Uh, he's, uh, he's included uh, Last Dragon Sidekicks, The Rundown. Yeah, he was in The Rundown, and the last thing he looks like he was on was NCIS Los Angeles. Mm. And um, I wish you well, Mr. Uh, Rays. You have brought a lot of joy to the people, to children and people all over the world. Uh, I hope you, people um, give that money back, help you out. Best, Best of luck. luck. All right. Uh, by the way, Phineas and Ferb ended. Yes, I heard that. The summer is finally over. Yep. After 500 episodes. That was a long ass summer. Mm hmm. Actually, what kind of I kind of wanted to see the episode because I remember I was, I was at a meeting. Uh, I'm, mm -hmm. I, if those, those who don't aren't know, I'm a part of a medieval reenactment group, and uh, there are kids involved. And these one this one kid's like basically dragged his parents out because the final episode of Phineas and Ferb was airing, and he's like, "I'm not missing it." <laughs> yeah, I have it recorded. I just haven't watched it yet. I hope they make some sort of a reference. Like, man, that was a really long summer. 
I'm sure they will. Yeah, I mean, they met... What, I'm certain of it. They met the Avengers. There was a Star Wars-related episode. Mm -hmm. Surprised there were no Muppets involved at some point. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. But yeah, I actually... I, I was never, like, what you call a hardcore watcher. Mm. My niece... I was in... Oh, sorry, go for it. Uh, just, my nephews were really big into it, so whenever they came to visit, they would always, like, you know, put Disney Channel on and watch Phineas and Ferb. Or at least be playing in the background. And it was a funny show from what I saw. Mm -hmm. I was introduced to it by my sixth grade teacher, actually. Hmm. It was a slow day for teaching. Nothing really was going on. So he basically pulled up the first uh, few episodes, and we just watched them in class that day. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of cool. Yeah. That is how uh, Perry the Platypus came into my home. Perry the Platypus? I actually did Dr. Doofenshmirtz's voice on Homestuck Reader's Theater last week. Nice. It was beautiful. <laughs> Especially because uh, in the scene that I was doing, there was, a, there was an explosion. Mm -hmm. So it was the perfect time for me to go, Perry the Platypus? <laughs> I still want to do it. Perry the Platypus? <laughs> I still want to do as a, a just do some uh, a short thing where we used to, we record uh, Pulp Fiction lines in Muppet voices. <laughs> I want to do that. I really want to do that. Yeah, Big Bird going. I had this watch stuck up my ass for two whole years. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Um, uh, right. Um, oh, Marvel news. Marvel news. Oh wait, no, it's your turn. Okay. Well, actually, I've just got like so much freak. Basically, everything I've got left is video game stuff and dead people. Mm. So, I actually then just I just posted. Then let's okay, go ahead. All right, no, I just posted this to the way, to the Radioactive Walrus Entertainment f uh, fi Facebook group. Mm -hmm. It's a trailer for a game called Cuphead. Interesting. It's a uh, kind of an indie game, but mm -hmm. it's a here's what it says. Cuphead is a classic run and gun action game, heavily focused on boss battles. Inspired by the cartoons of the 1930s, the visuals and audio are painstakingly created with the same techniques of the era, i.e. traditional cell animation, hand-drawn and hand-inked, watercolor backgrounds, and original uh, jazz recordings. The tra I want five. You watch the trailer, you're going to want ten. Oh, God damn, just... Hearing that is just porn to my ears. It is. And the thing is, I, you can watch the trailer in like a minute. Yeah. I, I'm actually willing to, uh, you know, sit here and, I, like I said, I posted it to the Facebook group. If you want to go look, take a look at it, I want to hear your reaction. Okay. And you can, All right. You Let me reload the Facebook thing. Okay. And while, All right. while we're doing that, let me go share, I'm going to share a random fact about Christopher Lee, as we have, we're going to talk about the fact that he unfortunately passed away at the age of 93. Yeah. And God damn. Damn. Uh, he, he has an interesting life. Yeah. Uh, he met Prince Yusupov and Grand Duke Dmitry Pavlov Pavlovich, the assassins of the Russian monk Rasputin. He didn't do this research for his later film role as Rasputin in the 1966 Hammer film Rasputin the Mad Monk, but just as a child in the 1920s. Cool. cool. All right. So Starting it up. Okay. Cuphead and Mugman gambled with the devil. Ooh. And lost. <laughs> and for those folks that are not watching this, really, you need to, because it is done oh, yeah. so perfectly. Holy shit, I want to play this. I know. Uh, really badly. <laughs> Holy I mean, the pirates, and the sharks, and the giant punt boxing frogs, and the the rat, and the, the potato. Oh my. Yeah, and like I said, this is all hand-drawn animation that you can actually play. You can play <gasps> this game. God damn. Plus 80 years. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Dude, in 1936, plus 80 years. Oh, I want to play it now. And it should be coming out later in 2016. But yes. Yeah, why would you make me wait? <laughs> this is like me in Kingdom Hearts 3, you know? It's like, oh my Damn god! Damn it, E3! Damn it, why do you have to show these things that I want now? Yes, uh, those of you in, in, in Internet Land, you must see this game. It is going to be mm. phenomenal. Okay. Okay, wow. <laughs> uh, speaking of games... Uh, so the Steam Monster Summer Sale has started now. Yeah. Steam Summer Sale has started, and apparently the uh, 
game that they released for free is not awesome. I kind of boring. Heard something about that. Yeah, basically, it's it's every time you play it, you have a chance of uh, unlocking more sales. And from what my roommate said, it sucks. <laughs> yeah, from what my friends were telling me, it sucks. Because I went to a party the other night mm. and blacked out Chernobog or something like that. Anyway, you blacked out Fantasia. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, it's the item ball noun thing. No! Oh, oh. Yeah, they're making a live action version of that. Ha ha! No, sorry. Uh, anyway. Oh, wait, I, yeah. had, I had one more piece of, uh, uh, muse, of movie news. I'm going to save this to the end because it's a shit that should not be. Okay. Okay, anyway, let's see. Um, new Doom game. Well, yes. this is going to be a heavy... Most of my news this week, like I said, is very heavy on video games because E3 just happened. It is mm-hmm. happening. So, uh, eight, vi- eight minutes of hardcore Doom footage has been released. Yes. And it's bloody. Mm-hmm. It's real bloody. It's but I, awesome. It's awesome, but I also like the fact that they're, throw, they're, they're playing with a bunch of um, ideas that I've always had when I'm playing these first-person shooters. Like, why can't you climb up on top of that box? Or mm-hmm. why can't you just jump across where that... Uh, um, that uh, collapsed staircase is, because apparently in these, these these gameplay you can. Awesome. So nothing is out of uh, out of uh, uh, range anymore. Uh, yes. y- you get to see the, the the shotgun, the super shotgun, with double double barrel shotgun, obviously. Uh, right. The plasma rifle, uh, the chainsaw, and it's actually funny because you can hear them. They're they're filming. Apparently, they showed this at E3, and as they're recording the audience as they're showing the uh, video. Mm-hmm. And when the chainsaw uh, shows up, everyone just erupts, going "Wah!" Uh, you can punch zombies so hard, punch monsters so hard in the head they explode. You can tear them apart with yes, your bare hands. I love doing that in the original game. Yeah, um, and there's just a lot of cool stuff. And then it looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. So expect that sometime spring 2016. Awesome, I'm in. I'll go ahead and post that to our uh, Facebook wall. Great. And your turn, sir. All right. Uh, also from Bethesda, uh, Dishonored 2 is coming back. Saw the trailer for that, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not familiar with Dishonored or Dishonored 2, so uh, good on him. Well, from what I saw, the original Dishonored is almost like a, it's sort of a bit of a steampunk kind of game. Okay. And he was a guy who had been, uh, you know, he was like a soldier who... Had his uh, career destroyed, and his family left him because he been he been wrongfully accused of something, and dishonored basically is him, you know, getting his honor back. So honor, yeah. honor. Yes. Uh, let's see here. Uh, going. Uh, it's, oh, sorry. What? <laughs> well, going with the theme of tonight. Uh, Final Fantasy VII remake coming to PlayStation Four. I saw something about that. Yeah. I'm not a big Final Fantasy person, mm. so. I've got friends of mine who are like, dear God, they love anything involving Final Fantasy, and I'm sure they'll be very excited about this, you know, remake mm-hmm. on the PS4. Uh, it's just more along the lines of, oh boy, we've got another remake of a game that people liked from a childhood. Yay! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Though I do yeah. remember one of the funniest goddamn things I've ever seen in my life is back in like '96 when um, the PlayStation was first coming out, mm-hmm. and they released Final Fantasy VII for it. I'm right. s- I'm sitting there with my dad watching television, and they. You know, showing some of the pre-rendered backgrounds and stuff from Final Fantasy VII. Going, they said we couldn't make a movie this action-packed, and my dad's eyes perk up. He's like, "Whoa!" They said we couldn't have a story this deep and emotional. He's like, "Ooh, this sounds interesting." He sits forward. They said we couldn't have a film, th- uh, an epic this sweeping on the film stay in the film screen. My dad's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." They were right. Final Fantasy VII for PlayStation. My dad's like, oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I need to get, stop getting updates about that. Anyway. Okay. Uh, so, you remember the Star Wars uh, The Old Republic game? Yes, I've heard of this. Yes, there's a new expansion for it called Knights of the Fallen Empire. Hmm. Okay. Um... Basically, the idea behind this uh, expansion here is it's what a lot of the complaints about the original version is, is that there's not as much story, and Knights of the Fallen Empire is there to fix that. Okay. It looks pretty cool. Uh, uh, 
personal role-playing saga starring the Outlander, a veteran of the Great Galactic War, whose task is nothing less than taking down the Emperor of the Eternal Throne. Okay. That's the idea. The uh, expansion is free to subscribers, so if you immediately want to jump to a level 60 character, it's entirely up to you. Hmm. All right, speaking of Star, Star Wars, mm-hmm. uh, new, battle fr- new Star Wars Battlefront footage brings the Battle of, Light of Hoth to incredibly realistic life. Yes. Yes, I saw this first trailer. Uh, it's, they've already seen one trailer from the Star Wars Battlefront, which looks extremely pretty, uh, mm-hmm. but was it actually the in-game stuff? Well, now they have shown the in-game stuff, and it's pretty damn cool. Awesome. Uh, they show you can switch. The show switching between the the rebels, the uh, uh, Empire snow troopers. Uh, they uh, flying around in a, in a, a, a ice speeder or snow speeder, uh, f- flying around in tie fighters, and it ends with a for some god awful reason a battle between Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader in the snow. Huh. But it's pretty as fuck. Fair enough. And EA is promising Star Wars Battlefield can be played by up to 40 people, other people online, by yourself in single-player missions, or even split-screen with your friends and family. Cool. So this is the kind of game when I was, like, in the 80s, like, oh my god, this is all I've ever wanted to see in my life! (laughs) And now you can play it as an adult, yes. Yep. Or as one person said, well, I know what my my son's getting, I know what my son's getting for Christmas, whether he wants it or not. (laughs) Uh, Marvel news, okay. as I was going to say earlier. Okay. Uh, on the Doctor Strange area. Yes. Ch- uh, Chiwetel I- Ejiofor. I was like, I can't, I was, at first I was going to say, can you pronounce his name? I can't. Chiwetel I- I- Ejiofor? I- I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, sir. Mm-hmm. I, I apologize profusely, but, dude, you're going to play Baron Mor- Mordo in Doctor Strange. Yes. And I think that's pretty rad. He is a very, very good actor. Um, mm-hmm. I loved him in the a- as the uh, the operative in Serenity. Yes. Versus uh, Nathan Fillion. Now, the funny thing is, is later on, <clears throat> mm-hmm. I'm watching another movie called Kinky Boots, which is a very funny, very touching comedy uh, based on a true story about a British shoe factory that was losing money until they started actually making uh, footwear for transvestites. Mm-hmm. You know, sexy boots. Yes, but they I'm could, aware of this one. But they could stand up to the uh, the rigors of a, of a man's body. And the main uh, transvestite in the movie is actually ba- played by that same actor. Nice. Okay, now I need to see this movie. Oh, it's great. It's really funny. I really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, also, uh, in that in the same vein here, uh, Tilda Swinton. Uh, you remember uh, the uh, Narnia movies? Yeah, she also is um, one of the angels in the movie Constantine. Yes. But, She's the ancient one. Huh. Okay. Well, she's got a very adro- an, an androgynous look to her, mm-hmm. and she's very seems like a very very interesting person. So I'm, I, I'd be interested in seeing that. You know, Benedict Cumberpatch and the other and and the guy whose name whose name we cannot pronounce. <laughs> For the life of us, we're sorry. <laughs> we are very sorry. And Tilda Swinton. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. Have they have they announced a director yet? I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. Cool. If they got like you know, I don't know some really good horror director. Hmm. Someone really. Uh, I don't know. Um. I'll think on that one. Okay, anyway, let's see. Uh, more video game news. Okay. Or actually, not really video game news, but video controller news. Ooh. The Glove 1 smart gloves will let you feel virtual reality. Wait, the glove is coming back? Uh, this is a smart glove dubbed the Glove 1, which will enable users to feel sensations such as rainfall, heat, flitting of a butterfly, shapes, and even wave an object while interacting with virtual uh, objects. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a haptic glove. Yes! 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 <laughs> In the same vein, the Oculus has revealed its Consumer Rift VR head- headset, which will be released later this year. We're hitting... We're there. We are hitting the o- Oasis. We have the Oasis. We have everything finally! we need to get to the Oasis. Ah, uh, finally! Yep. Um, it's They're doing, going for a Kickstarter program for $150,000. They're well over halfway there. I will play. I will go ahead and post the uh, Kickstarter uh, website on the on Radioactive Walrus. If you want to feel like putting some money into it, please, please do, do. Please do. So we are getting so close, ladies and gentlemen. So freaking close. We're only a couple of years off what James Halliday and 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 Oz were doing 
of getting the Oasis going, we're getting there. Oh, we're, we're so, so close. close. I can taste it. Yes. Anyway, um, I have two stories left. Okay, I have, let's see. Shit that should not be, shit shit that might might be, and a and four people dead. <laughs> All right, let's just go with the four people dead. Okay, well we'll start with one that a lot of people don't really know, but she's uh, very much an icon. Okay. Uh, Blaze Star, burlesque star linked to government to Governor Earl Long, dead at eighty three. Alas, uh, she was a, a burlesque star and stripper whose affair with nineteen fifties Louisiana governor gained notoriety for both parties. Um. She uh, co wrote her autobiography in 1974, and the book was adapted 15 years later in the movie Blaze, starring Pearl, Paul Newman as Earl Long and Lolita v- Div- Davidovich as Star. So, God bless you, young lady. Um, continue shining up in, the, up in the heavens. Namaste. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Also, uh, Ron Moody, uh, the act- yes. ad- actor best known as Fagin in. Oliver has died in 19, died at yeah died at 1991. Holy cow, he'd be old. <laughs> <laughs> has died in 91. Now he was best known for playing Fagin. He's nominated for an Oscar in the um, uh, big screen adaption of the Broadway musical Oliver. Mm-hmm. But after Fagin, he was basically typecast, and he didn't want to play the same character again and again. So he ended up going back to theater and having a grand old time. Yep. Um, he also showed up on a few TV roles over the years, and yeah. Yeah, after seeing that he died, I went and had to IMDb him, unfortunately. Yeah. I still haven't seen Oliver. Yeah. Uh, it's a good movie. I enjoyed it. I had Oliver, Oliver Reed in it. But his best-known film appearance besides Oliver was The Twelve Chairs, the 1970s slapstick comedy develop, de- directed by Mel Brooks, which is a funny-ass movie. I'll have to look, I will have to look for that one. Yeah, basically, if I remember correctly, it's about um, a, a jewel thief who hides jewels in these 12 different chairs. Mm-hmm. And to try to get away, and then he has to track down the chairs all across Europe because they get shipped out. Shh. Oh, wait, no, no, wait. He tra- he puts it in one of the 12 chairs. Oh, so he has to find the one that... Yeah. Oh, my God. And it ends really hilariously. But, anyway. All right, let's see. Um, what's your next story? Do you have another story, or do you want to continue on with the uh, obituaries? I only have one story left, so you go ahead and continue with the obituaries. Okay, uh, famous WWE and professional wrestler Dusty Rhodes has passed away. Yeah, I saw that one too. Yeah, he was a WWE Hall of Famer, three-time NWA champion, and one of the most captivating and charismatic figures in sports entertainment history. He was a very... He was, he, he was the classic kind of 70s and 80s wrestler. He wasn't a very muscular dude and didn't have a great skill set, but he had charisma. Mm-hmm. And he could talk a microphone like nobody's business. It was hilarious listening to him talk because you never were exactly sure what what was going to come out of him next. Oh Christ! But his two children, um, uh, Cody Rhodes and uh, uh, Dustin Rhodes, are both still wrestlers. Uh, we've actually talked about Cody Rhodes before as Stardust and his his uh, semi feud with Stephen Amell from uh, Arrow. From Arrow. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, another thing I saw today tonight right before I, I uh, loaded up was. The rapper Machine Gun Kelly got suplexed by a wrestler on WWE Raw. I'm like, good on them. <laughs> this is the same Machine Gun Kelly who accidentally started a riot in Bowling Green, Ohio, a couple of years ago. Oh my god! He's playing the Clazelle, and they you know, overpacked the place, and so they had to uh, turn people away, and they started banging on the doors. <laughs> so it was it was a rather amusing situation. Hmm. All right, and let's finally... All right, um, well, finally, I guess we should talk a little bit about uh, the man, the myth, the magic. The uh, legend. The legend, yes. Uh, there is no other way for this for this man to be titled otherwise. Yeah, Sir Christopher Lee. He has passed away at 93. Yeah. yeah. Um, he has entered... I'm gonna, I basically have a list of 22 incredible facts about the life and career of Sir Christopher Lee. I'm not going to try to read them all. I'll just post it to the, face, to the, the website. Uh, you okay. can read it at your own perusal, but I'll give a couple of them. Mm-hmm. Um, his mother was an Italian contessa. Right. And through her, Lee descended from the Ch- Emperor Charlemagne of the Holy Roman Empire and was related to Robert E. Lee, the Confederate general. Mm-hmm. Um, at some point... Um... Uh, at some point during the war, he was moved from the from, to Winston Churchill's even more elite special operations executive, and it was called informally the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Yes, <laughs> this one I know. Yeah, um, actually, relating to something that when Peter Jackson was talking about in the Lord of the Rings was talking about 
how someone sounded when they were stabbed in the back, Christopher Lee actually stepped up and told him how he actually sound, sounded when they were stabbed in the back. And when Jackson asked how he knew this, he just, I just know. <laughs> yep. And I would totally believe that. Yeah, let's see. Um, wow. Speaking both French, French and... Man, this thing, this dude lived a life. Mm-hmm. Okay. While filming a, a sword fight with a drunken Errol Flynn during the filming of The Dark Avengers in 1955, Flynn accidentally cut Lee's hand so badly his near, finger nearly come off and was permanently injured. Later, Lee cut off Flynn's wig while wig, Flynn was still wearing it. <laughs> Flynn stormed off the set and refused to come out of his trailer until Lee claimed it was an accident. Sure, claimed. <laughs> uh, let's see. Also in the... Uh... Legendary Christopher Lee. He was the only guy on set who actually knew uh, Tolkien personally. Yeah, he'd actually met them back sometime in the seventies. Yeah. yeah, and he apparently would read the he'd re- reread the Lord of the Rings at least once a year. Mm-hmm. Um, this is I mean, one, that's dedication. Yeah, there. this is one of my favorites. In the nineteen fifties, Lee was engaged to Henrietta, Henrietta von Rossen daughter of Count Fritz von Rossen. The Count apparently didn't like Lee because after hiring private detectives to investigate the actor and demanding references, he also refused to allow his daughter to marry him unless Lee got the blessing of the King of Sweden. Lee got it. <laughs> yeah. he uh, An interesting addendum to that one. Mm-hmm. He also had to carry the uh, crest of the Holy Roman Empire for a short time also to marry this woman. And he pulled it off. And he pulled it off. Yep. Uh, but yeah, he uh, recorded his first heavy metal album in 2010 at the age of 88, mm-hmm. uh, titled "Charlemagne by the Sword and, and the Cross." He won the Spirit of Metal Award from the 2010 10 Metal Hammer Golden God Ceremony. He is the oldest metal performer and the oldest musician to ever hit the B- Billboard Music Charts. Yeah. yeah, he was also a world champion fencer, an opera singer, spoke six languages, and was a hell of a go- of a golfer. With a voice like that, I would totally believe opera. Mm-hmm. And last but not least, despite everything you've heard about the six degrees of Kevin Bacon, Christopher Lee was recognized as the most connected actor in the world in 2000 again, 2008. He connects to virtually any actor in 2.59 sp- steps, beating B- Kevin Bacon. So, Godspeed to you, Mr. Uh, Sir Christopher Lee. You have done things that the rest of us can't even begin to dream about. Mm-hmm. Oh, also, he wrote a rock, a rock opera about Dracula. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Wow. All right, did I post that already, or...? You might have. Oh, I, I just know. gotta double-check that. But yes, he did, he did every freaking everything you possibly can imagine, seriously. Mm-hmm. He also has the most uh, titles to his name on IMDb. Yeah. Out of everyone. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, so... That's all my deaths. From... All right. I've got my last story here. Okay. This one I'm kind of on the fence about. Bill Murray is going to be in a new movie in the Middle East called Rock the Casbah. I saw the trailer for that. Mm-hmm. It, uh, mm, it looks like it could be amusing. Yeah. Um, it's got Bruce Willis in it as well. Yep. Basically, uh, Kate s- Hudson, Zoe Deschanel, mm-hmm. uh, Danny McBride, and Bruce Willis. Yeah, basically he's a, he plays a, a, a rock manager... Who gets stranded in the Middle East by his panicking uh, star, and he's got to figure out a way to get out. Mm-hmm. He's got no money, no passport, nothing. They better play the Clash, the the song by the Clash. I'm sure they will. If not, and I see this movie, I will walk out. I, I think that's a given. All right, okay. This is my semi shit that should not be, and then my real shit that should not be. Ready? Go for it. Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy are officially confirmed to be dating. Oh, cool. For the first time, DC Comics has acknowledged that what we all knew be true. Harley Quinn and, Dave and Poison Ivy are more than friends, and we don't mean BFFs or gal pals or eternal friends or any other euphemism used to downplay a remote romantic relationship between two women. DC Comics officially said, yes, they are girlfriends without the, ch- without the jealousy or, or monogamy. Jealousy Great. of monogamy. So basically, they, they get together because they can. They enjoy themselves. Which, And they did, however, post the... the uh, infamous and hilarious scene from Batgirl Adventures, where Batgirl actually tries to ask Harley Quinn if they're friends. <laughs> I, I don't even know how to describe it. Basically, it's like... Uh, uh, it's a hard description. Basically, the, uh, Batgirl and, and Harley Quinn have to rescue Poison Ivy from a group of terrorists. 
mm-hmm. because Harley Quinn was trying to get one of the members of the Bat family to help them out. Right. So uh, Harley's all excited and you know getting hoping that you know that Poison Ivy beats the terrorists and Batgirl's like, how can you be around her? She's poisonous. Oh, Ivy gave me a shot, so a special shot, so we can play. We don't get sick at all. You mean you too? What? You and Ivy are friends? Yeah. You know, friends? And she crosses her fingers. And then Harley looks at her and goes, what, like everyone says about you and Supergirl? What? Who says? Forget it! Forget it! <laughs> oh my god. I read that all the way back in like 93 or 94, and I about died laughing. Oh my god. All right. That's uh, my shit that should not be. I'm sorry. Oh, fuck. <clears throat> Demi Lovato, Rain Wilson, and Mandy Patinkin, the voice, get Smurfy. They're relaunching the Smurf, uh, the the Smurf franchise on the big screen again. Why? Uh, because the franchise has made over nine hundred million dollars globally. All right. What? <laughs> okay, if they're gonna do that kind of thing, then that then I had better get my own goddamn Snorks movie. All right. <laughs> It says platinum selling recording artist Demi Lovato has signed to voice the girl power, girl powerful Smurfette. Uh, comic actor Rain Wilson will be playing, stepping into the evil shoes of the Smurf nemesis Gargamel, and Papa Smurf will be played by Emmy Award winner Mandy Patinkin. Oh, Mandy Patinkin, what happened after Princess Bride? Seriously, Dead Like Me is really good. Dead Like Me, uh, a Criminal Minds, all these incredible things he did. Now he's making Get Smurfy. Well, the worst part is the Smurfs didn't even start as their own series. It was another. It was the Adventures of Pee Wee and Johan or something. Something like that. Yeah, because there was like a. Mo- I remember there was a, a, a Smurfs movie from the '80s, which was actually just a recut of a of their of a, of a film with you know Pee Wee and Johan, who were very popular in Europe, and the Smurfs just came came as a spinoff of that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, apparently Katy Perry was too busy to do this, concerning she did the last Smurf movie. <sighs> Alright, that's it. That's I got nothing else. <laughs> yep, that, that's all. That's it. That's our news, guys. So we're going <sighs> to actually get to the show. Yes. And so, since we're actually ending on a, re, on a reboot, let's, let's start on what we're talking about tonight. Alright, so for those of you who have listened to this show before, there is an infamous Lost episode. Yes. This was back when I was still in the recording closet. You know, that wasn't too long ago now, but... Right, and... Soon enough, it will be that way. Anyway, uh, so... We did an episode that we were going to call Nostalgia Gone Bad. Yeah. And we had done the whole episode. We we laughed our asses off. Oh, we had so much fun. Yeah, we broke each other, basically. Mm Mm-hmm. And it came time to edit and uh, post the episode, and I realized I hadn't even recorded it. Yeah, and I hadn't recorded it from my side, because I figured he'd recorded it, but this was during a time period when uh, Casa de Noel had been hit with a virus that took out their router, and he hadn't, yeah. he hadn't gotten around to uh, resetting everything, including you know, recording everything on uh, the Skype. So, unfortunately, we lost that episode, which really sucked, because one thing I do remember, more than anything else, is we broke each other on... Uh, thou shalt not have this actor play this character. <laughs> yep. And my suggestion was uh, Will Ferrell as Blade. Actually, that was my suggestion. Oh, okay. What was mine to you? That was just like, oh god. <laughs> oh, I don't remember, unfortunately. But that one was that one was powerful. Yeah, that, was that, potent. That, that was that was potent. <laughs> but we're going to talk about nostalgia gone bad again. And mm-hmm. one of the big things we have, I think, I've made clear on this show is we're we. I am a hypocrite. Yes. Uh, yes, you are. I'm a hypocrite. There, there's all these things. I'm like, oh my god, I can't wait for the new Star Wars movie. Or, oh my god, I can't wait for this. And, oh my god, I, the new Ghostbusters movie is going to suck. It's just like... Nostalgia has ruined entertainment today. <laughs> yes. And this is not, a, and this is not a, a, a one-time thing. This has been going on for the past, from Hollywood's point of view, at least from the 1920s and 30s. Mm. I mean, the classic movie, The Maltese Falcon... Uh, was actually made twice before, before it actually became the Maltese Falcon, or the Unholy Three with Lon Chaney. Right, the Unholy Three with Lon Chaney, uh, the 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 Dame in Black, I think, is another one, version of it. But basically, there's been a lot of different uh, remakes and, and remixes. Mm-hmm. 
and popular culture has now become a shorthand for uh, um, a lot of things in our lives. You know, Paul, the Quentin Tarantino was pretty much one of the first directors to really take advantage of this and use the shorthand of you know Happy Days and uh, Madonna and such in the movie Pulp Fiction mm-hmm. to explain things he was trying to relate that he couldn't do through his own words. Or even look at Clerks with all of its references to Star Wars. Star Wars and Jaws and, you know, everything else. Mm -hmm. So the problem has become is that everything is is nostalgia anymore. And it's very rare for new and exciting things to come up. New and exciting new properties, anyway. Um, Exactly. And I I can understand the reasons why, because Hollywood spends a lot of money. Mm -hmm. They want a guaranteed return. So they put a guarantee, you know, put the Smurfs movie out there for $100 million, and they get pretty much guaranteed to get their money back. And they have. Oh, yeah. Twice. But at the same time, it's very much stifling creativity. Um, Yeah. Now, there are... I mean... uh, The thing is, it seems more television's actually getting a little closer to uh, being able to create uh, new and exciting properties. Yeah. Because they're not throwing as much money out there as a big budget, you know, we were talking about Jurassic World. That's the fourth of the Jurassic Park series, mm-hmm. and it's a guarantee. It, 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 it's proven it's a guaranteed, guaranteed pay, money maker, pay, money maker. And likewise, the Tomorrowland film, which is not based on any existing properties, save the uh, uh, Tomorrowland World at Tomorrowland uh, Land at Disney World, Disneyland. It didn't tank. It's going to make its money back, but it's not. It was not the runaway success, success they wanted it to be. Exactly. I mean. <sighs> Seriously, all I have to say is Chappie. Yeah. I, it sounded like a great idea at the beginning, mm-hmm. but I just did not get as as much recognition as it needed. Right. I mean, it had a good cast. It's a Gordon Weaver and Hugh Jackman. It also had mm-hmm. the... Was it Die Antwort? <laughs> sorry. Die Antwort. Die Antwort. Who is, I'm sorry. I did not want to see them in that movie, but... Neil Bowskamp is very well known for supporting South Africa, so he put them in there. And ugh. but no, I like them. You like the band? I like the band. Okay, I've heard a couple of their songs. They're okay, but everything I've heard is that that, that Ninja is an asshole. Yeah, that's kind of the idea. Yeah. Oh well, I'm trying to remember everything we were, we talked about beforehand. I mean, we I, we talked I, about some of the the reboots from the from stuff from the '80s specifically. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I kind of find it interesting that we're doing a reboot of an episode that we already <laughs> did. Yeah, isn't that that is hadn't really thought about that kind of a there's an irony to all. There's a bit of an irony, yeah. Now, anyway, there have been you know major successes in the reboots, of course. like uh, Transformers. <sighs> yeah, I'm not I saying know, it's much... a good movie, but they had their multi billion dollar flicks. Mm-hmm. And I will just give uh, P- I will give uh, Michael Bay props for the one good thing he did which is to use Peter Cullen as Optimus Prime. Yeah. But at the same time, that's you know using nostalgia. I mean, exactly. Optimus Prime's voice is so ingrained in our gener- in my generation, if nothing else, that mm-hmm. I can't imagine anyone else. You can imagine, like, I don't know, Hugh Jackman trying to be the voice of Optimus Prime. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to think of like, a manly voice, and he's got a manly voice, but, you know, Hugh Jackman, we would just like, no, don't do that. I could hear Kevin Conroy doing that voice. Yeah, but he's a voice actor. I'm talking. Yeah. You know, I'm talking the stunt casting. Hmm. Um, Nicholas Cage as Optimus Prime. Well, you see, <laughs> Keanu Reeves. Autobots roll out. <laughs> Keanu Reeves as Optimus Prime. <laughs> Whoa, dude. Whoa. Whoa. Autobots roll out. So. Basically, there's been a lot of remakes and reboots over the last couple of years, especially mm-hmm. like, and the ones I just, I, I jotted down a few of them, like the G.I. Joe cartoon series that came out, and the G.I. Joe movie. Oh, God. I saw uh, the first movie that they came out with. And it was pretty bad, cycle. yeah. It was pretty Christopher bad. Christopher Eccleston, why? <laughs> why? Yeah. And then there was the second one called The Rise of Cobra. I think it was The Rise of Cobra. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see it, but it had The Rock in it. As Roadblock, and you know that's good casting on his part. Yeah, I still I didn't see it. And then there's like stuff I've seen it at uh, work, like Strawberry Shortcake, and of course the uh, ubiquitous uh, My Little Pony. Uh, friendship truly is magic. Friendship is magic, or Brony, as many the various Bronies that have come out and so on and so forth. Um, 
But like I said, I, I actually read a statistic not long ago that the fourth most masturbated ca to character is Rainbow Dash. Thank you for that information. Congratulations. Where do they even find this information? Who would actually put this information out there? Who would answer that survey? I don't know. Ooh. Somebody. Probably anonymous. I don't even know who for number one is. My first first thing that popped in my head is Harley Quinn. Princess Peach. What? Yep. What? Uh-huh. Her? Yeah. Why? Damsel in distress? There's I don't know. something... I have never seen her in a sexual manner. Neither have I. But apparently that is that is the case. I, I do not. I'm, I'm kind of terrified and intrigued by this this, this survey. Anyway, <laughs> no. No, one of the things I remember talking, I was talking about was the Thundercats remake. Mm -hmm. That came out maybe five, four or five years ago. It was on Cartoon Network. Yes, and I remember this. I grew up with the original Thundercats. And mm -hmm. actually, they're the, they're the reason I came up with the my theory called Thundercats Effect, which I've explained on past shows. But real quickly is is that you love something as a child, but when you go back and watch it as an adult, you discover how really, really crappy it is. <laughs> yes. And I think that might be uh, a reason why people are doing a lot of these remakes, because they're going back and watching stuff they loved as a child and discovering it's not giving them that warm, fuzzy feeling they had. Yeah. And they want to give it that warm, fuzzy feeling. But the Thundercats originally were a group of, of Thunderans who crash-landed on Earth after their planet was destroyed, and they basically set up new Thundera and fight against mutants and uh, uh, Mumra for control of this new Earth and protecting the inhabitants of the new Earth. And right. the Thundercats cartoon series, a new one, uh, was the same characters with a completely different storyline. Mm -hmm. I mean, it had Lino, but instead of, you know, Lino being a child trapped in an adult's body, he was a teenager, and Tigra was his, like, half-brother. Uh, Chitaro was a very mysterious character, and Pumra, uh, not Pumra, um, Panthro was there, and so on and so forth. And they were traveling around, on, basically, on Thundera doing all this shit. Right. And I watched it, and it wasn't bad. It was well animated, well drawn, well acted, well uh, well written. But it had so little to do with the original Thundercats. My question is, why'd they even bother? Why didn't they just create their own uh, their own uh, property? Mm -hmm. I mean, it has been discovered that serious animation in the United States can work. Uh, look at the Avatar series. Right. I mean, uh, Avatar: Last Airbender and Legend of Korra are both fantastic series. Mm hmm. And unfortunately, they're still a rarity because, <laughs> pardon me, since, you, since the DC Comics universe went off the air, there's really not much out there anymore. Exactly. So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, where it comes to the uh, Avatar universe, I actually didn't get into Avatar. And if you listen to the anime episode, I didn't actually get into Avatar long until long after it had ended. Okay. So when they, when they did the, uh, when M. Night Shyamalan did the movie... Mm -hmm. That was when I finally got into the series. Ugh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't actually see the movie. And from all I can find is, thank God. Yeah. Because, <coughs> damn. Mm. Just no. Yeah. The, the, the Avatar movie was not good. <laughs> it, it, it was not made of good. <laughs> it was made of all very, very bad. It was all very, very bad, yes. Now, I'm not going to say that no remakes work. Mm -hmm. um, the Battlestar Galactica from the Sci-Fi Channel was actually extremely well done. Yes. Uh, the one with James, James Edward Olmos. Uh, very well done. Five seasons. Uh, my dad, who's a dedicated sci-fi sci fan, said it was the best science fiction series he'd ever seen. And I personally, that's high praise for him. That is high praise. Yeah. One of these days, I actually have to watch it. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, but at the same time, I think what's the problem is is that we have a lot of products and a lot of uh, properties that Hollywood takes a look at, sees the nostalgia factor, and remakes for better or for worse. Yeah, and I mean, the fact of the matter is Battlestar Galactica wasn't a big show when it was on. It was only on like two, two maybe two and a half seasons mm -hmm. in like 79 and 80. And the, the first, sa first season was set in space, and the second season, they were on Earth because they couldn't afford the budget anymore. Exactly. Um... I'm actually, because I'm very surprised I've never done a remake of Buck Rogers. I was just going to say that. Hmm. Because that yeah. was done in the same time period. About, I think it was that was a three-season show. Because the second, first two seasons were on Earth, and the third season was they were traveling around from alien world to alien world. Yeah. And it's a fun show, too. It's... Mm -hmm. it, it's... Cr it's... <sighs> I watched most of it because my dad had late-night homework. Okay. 
But, <laughs> dude, it is so 70s-licious. Oh, it is incredibly 70s-licious. Did you know that DC Fontana, who uh, wrote one of the, some of the first few episodes of Star Trek, actually worked on that show, too? I'm not surprised, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, that's another show that just, like, uh, a tr- that's another uh, property that refuses to die. Oh, Trek? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, there were a lot of good shows back then. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised that, you know... Well, actually, no, there was that remake, the, the big-budget Wild Wild West. Yeah. But I've, I, that worked. I remember watching that as a TV... As a kid, you know, they had reruns on the uh, Christian Broadcasting Network. They had, like, Western Western Sundays, as they called them. Mm-hmm. And it was a fun show. I mean, it had little sci-fi elements, and, and Jim West in tight pants kicking ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, But I guess... I don't know, it's just... it. Nostalgia is such a hard thing. Like I said, there's certain things I'm excited for. I mean, I'm really mm-hmm. excited for the new Star Wars movie. And it's not really a remake or a reboot. It's a continuation. I guess that's one reason I'm really more excited about it, because I'm going to get a chance to see, you know, Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, uh, Harrison Ford, and, and Chewbacca. And unfortunately, not Peter Mayhew, but someone playing Chewbacca. You really? Know, it's not Peter, Mew- Peter Mayhew? He has another body for it anymore, man. Oh, that's a good point. He was He's already seven foot tall, and he's in his 70s. Yeah. So he's not. He's already said his knees are shot, and he uses a walker. So he's mm-hmm. not going to have you know, a chance to get into the new uh, Chewbacca outfit. It's sort of like David Prowse can't be Dar- can be Darth Vader again because he's his body's all busted up too. Yeah. Um, Which is unfortunate. But Peter Mayhew has you know is involved in you know all the uh, 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 mm-hmm. what's the word not merchandising the 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 promotion. Thank you. The, yes. He's involved in the promotion of the film, and he's he's very excited because. He's always had a soft spot for Chewbacca. But, Who wouldn't? Yeah, but the thing is, is that what would happen if, like, 20 years down the line, they finally decide to remake Star Wars, the original? Yeah. I mean, they've remade Star Trek. Would the fans go for it? I don't know. I mean, Star Trek is a tricky thing because you have characters in situations where uh, they've already done recasting. Uh-huh. So Star Trek would work. Uh, notable examples of this include, uh, well, these two th- the two thousand nine movies, of course. Yeah. Uh, they had d- they did some uh, crossovers between Next Gen and uh, TOS, mm-hmm. especially in the episode Relics, which actually had uh, James Doohan. But still, I was thinking uh, the DS nine TOS episode, the uh, Trials and tribu- Tribulations. <laughs> that too. Yeah. So for Star Trek, it would make sense, and it's the next logical step. Right, right. But Star Wars doesn't have that grand tradition. No, no. In the slightest. I mean, they have the three movies, and that's really about it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I guess six movies, okay? Yeah, I, to forget the I know. Happen. I know how you feel about them. Me. We, listeners, if you really want to know how Dan feels about the movies, just listen to our two Star Wars episodes. Yeah! Very easy to do. Anyway... Uh, but no, we also got a lot of remakes from 80s films. Um, yeah. Robocop, for example. Yes. Came out last What'd you year. think of that? Because uh, I didn't see him. I saw a bit of it. It wasn't bad. Okay. Um, the, the, seat, the suit was a lot thinner, and he moved, mm-hmm. he moved a lot more excitingly. Um, and there was, of course, you know, way too much CGI. Of course. But I had Michael Keaton, and he's always fun to watch. Absolutely. Uh, but other things that really are not making me happy are Gem and the Holograms. Oh. <sighs> You mean uh, Pitch Perfect. I mean the, the Justin Bieber story as cast with Jim and the Holograms. You know, being discovered on YouTube. It that is an, That's an example of taking a property and completely changing the story. If I had a shotgun sound for this right now, that is what would be playing. Because, God damn it, the Pitch Perfect people need to stop it. Yeah, yeah. And the movie they is made being... the first... Okay. <laughs> I don't like modern musicals. I don't. Okay? All we have is Glee and Pitch Perfect. Hmm. That's it. They're really boring. Because Oh, and High School Musical. And that's just, that's the root of the problem is High School Musical because it's about education. And education, while interesting and all of life mm-hmm. makes for really, really boring and hackneyed uh, content. 
Mm -hmm. You can only tell the same story five billion different times. Exactly. There's only so many th ways you can make this thing work, you know? So please, for the love of God, <laughs> stop, stop. These movies! Because it's not geek news, but they're making a third one! They're making a third Pitch Perfect? They're making a third Pitch Perfect! Oh, man. Uh, let's see. Oh, and of course, then there's always the remakes that never happen, thank God. Mm. Um, I think the first one that pops into my head is Akira. Yes. Which Although is a, they keep trying to do They that. keep trying to, and they really need to stop. They just need to stop. Mm-hmm. I mean, they are... It, it's a quintessentially 80s... A quintessentially 80s Japanese film. It needs to never be made. And it's a beautiful movie. It's a gorgeous movie. The, the soundtrack, soundtrack is gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Like, I drool every time I listen to it. Just yeah. a little bit. Uh, and then there's, uh... Uh, the Yellow Submarine uh, was another one that, was put, uh, that they were trying to recat, remake. Why would they try to remake that? It was Robert Zemeckis and his his love of motion capture. He that was, makes no fucking sense. Yeah, thankfully because of the failure of Mars got Mars has needs moms. Um, oh god, thank god! It, it it tanked and they never had a chance. They decided not to uh, f fulfill that. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. They were talking about one point in making a remake of Revenge of the Nerds, which was a... Um, also quintessentially 80s flick. Yeah, apparently it was actually filming, too. Yeah. It was the cast included Adam Brody, J Jenna Dewan, and Kristen Calavari. Two weeks of shooting took place, but they were disappointed by the dailies and pulled the plug. So, mm. thank God for that. Mm-hmm. Um, Let's see. They tried... They... Uh, tried to keep remaking some of the classic Universal monster movies as well, like uh, Creature of the Creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah, that's another one of those remakes things. They're trying to do. They they were trying to create a a a a, uh, a cinematic universe, or like what Marvel's had so much success with, and DC yeah. is trying. And the first movie that was going to be Dracula Untold. Yes. Which apparently didn't Actually, do I so think hot. The first one was I Frankenstein. No, that was a separate one, as far as I know. That was separate. Yeah. Oh. Okay. No, that was it. Was the first one was gonna be Dracula Untold, and they're gonna go back and retell like the Mummy and the Wolfman, the Beast, from, and the yeah, Beast from Twenty Thousand Thousands. No, uh, the Black <laughs> Beast of the Black Lagoon, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But apparently, since the Dracula Untold movie didn't do so hot, they're retooling that idea. And, and then they all get together and become the Universal Monster Avengers. Yes. The, yes. The League of Universal Monsters. Oh my God. The League of Extraordinary Monsters. <laughs> I want a comic book of that on my desk Friday. <laughs> I'll get right on it, sir. <laughs> no, I, it, I can't. Like I said, I understand taking old properties. I mean, how many remakes of you know how many versions of Shakespeare have we seen? Of you course, know, both the, with the original Bard's voices and with new stuff. I mean, Lion King is basically a retelling of Hamlet. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, uh, Kimbo the White Lion, but that we're not going into that in this episode. Right, right, right. Um, that, that's another episode. That's another episode. Plus, you know, the millions of ep the, the hundreds of times that Sherlock Holmes has been committed to to, to uh, film. Of course. But, and I don't know what the difference is. Why am I so happy? I'm like, oh my god, they're making a Sherlock Holmes movie with Ian McKellen, as versus, oh god, they're remaking Tra Team Eng Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles again. Yeah. Is it because my own feelings as a child? I mean, like that's well, something that's so near and dear to my heart. The thing is that, uh, yes, it, it's it's a fresher wound, mm -hmm. but Sherlock Holmes also has the uh, pastiches. Yes, which you have very and very much enlightened me on. Yeah, there's some really good ones out there. Yeah, so that one has the capacity to go on. Beyond its original intents right. and purposes, mm -hmm. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles already has a pretty set mythology. Yes, maybe. because there have been so many writers on it. It's the same reason why I say that there's never been a true uh, on-screen Batman, hmm. except for Batman the Animated Series. Right, right. Because every time uh, they do Batman, it's a measure of extremes. Adam West is too campy. Michael Keaton is uh, too short. a little bit too goofy these days. Yeah. Christian Bale is too silly and too dark. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't understand what you're saying. 
Where's the trigger? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Are you okay? Are you? I lost my voice! You need a breath mint? <laughs> but yeah, that... And because we've had just that many extremes, mm -hmm. that's why Batman is a tough character to do. I'm excited to see what they do in the future with uh, Ben Affleck and such. Yeah, the Batfleck. Yeah. You know what? I'm willing to let that one go. Anyway, well, no, the thing is, is I, I actually am kind of looking forward to it. I mean, Ben Affleck is a good actor. He had a yes. he had a couple of rough spots where he, he he chose some bad roles, but he has come back and proved himself a very capable director and actor. I mean, Ar I mean Argo is an amazing film. When I went back to watch Dogma again after several years of uh, skipping over it, yeah, this was right like right after uh, the Batfleck stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I watched Dogma again, and I'm like, hey, he's really good. I mean, Bartleby is a character that I really care about. Yeah. I think I might be able to give Batfleck a chance. Yeah, yeah. But, let's but see it. Again, <laughs> it's the the same reason why we've never had a, a, a true on-screen Batman mm -hmm. is the same reason why we go, oh, they're doing the Turtles again. Yeah, they never had an on-screen Turtles. Well, they've never had a true on-screen Turtles, because the original Turtles, as many people know them, derive mostly from the 80s cartoon. Yeah, they don't know the original comic book that much, the original Mirage exactly. Studios comic book. Which so was that's... very dark, by the way. They actually killed uh, Shredder <laughs> in the first freaking episode. <laughs> turtles, fight with honor! It's like, Turtles, fight your greatest enemy, and he's dead by the end of the first, uh, first comic. Wait, what? <laughs> it wasn't even like a exactly. trilogy, he was just dead. <laughs> Then he came, but then that's he came it. back, but yeah. Hmm. That's, just that's why we we go uh, every time they do the turtles, or every time they do Transformers. Although Transformers is kind of a thing in and of itself because of the way that it's been handled. Yeah, I watched the first movie and it was just awful. Yeah, I mean, it was I just, remember seeing the first movie. Just it was. So I don't want to own this goofy. It was so damn goofy. Mm-hmm. And I don't want Transformers being goofy. I mean, yeah, I know it was an 80s cartoon, and I know that you know, it was kind of silly despite its own merits, but it was never silly to be silly. It was silly because they were shooting it for kids. Exactly. And the Michael Bay movies just, you know... We need more robot balls. We need, more, we need a robot taking a leak on a, on, on, you know, a semi-bad guy. You know, what, huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was just dumb. So it takes it from fun child... Uh, con uh, fun child content to puerile fucking shit. Yeah, to to teenager crap. Exactly. All right. One other. Then there was like the. Let's see. There was the. Wasn't technically a remake of, but the the movie The Thing, the new one. Yeah. Actually, the, when it turns out it wasn't actually a remake of the original thing. It was. Really? Yeah. It was actually the lead. It was. It was the tale of the Swedish researchers before the first thing. Hmm. It was their fight against the thing, and it, it leads directly into the Kurt Russell, John Carpenter one, which is still to this day, holy shit, amazing film. Cool. Yeah, so that was a that was a, a use of a reboot in such a way that it wasn't technically a reboot, but it still paid homage to the first one. Yeah, but they tried to do the same thing with Alien, with Prometheus. Oh, yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, me either. I... Uh... One of our co-workers actually described it to me as Space Christian and the Talking Head. <laughs> was that Tim? No, that was uh, Craig. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it sounds pretty bad. Um, yeah, I've not heard ver anything good about it. Mm -hmm. um, let's see what else. Uh, trying to think. I actually have a list here of... Uh, oh, please. 50 uh, bad remakes... Okay. All right. Take, pick a couple. We'll talk about them. Top of the list is Planet of the Apes. Yeah. The 2001 one with by Tim Burton. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Uh, Tim Burton. Of... That, that was oh, just sorry. Tim Burton. You just get, you know, Tim Burton needs a paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Uh, Death at a Funeral. Yeah, that was originally based on a British comedy. It was remade with the is remade as a hip hop black uh, black movie. Yay. Yeah, I like the original. It's very funny. It has uh, Alan Tudyk in it. That's Peter. He has Peter Dinklage. Yes, it's very fucking funny. Yeah, 
but not so much the second one. The funny thing is, Peter Dinklage played him, played the same character in both movies. Yeah. Well, who else are you gonna get? How many gay images can you find? Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, they they. Ugh, that was bad. <laughs> that remake was really bad. Mm. Uh, don't get me wrong, I like the guy who played uh, 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 Freddy, Freddy Krueger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, horror films are really the ones that are getting the worst end of the stick when it comes to remakes and reboots. Yeah. I mean, Friday the 13th, Halloween, um, Silent Night, Deadly Night, uh, the, Friday, the, the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. I mean, these are movies that very near and dear to our hearts and are just getting remade for new teenagers. Exactly. Well, I can understand that teenagers like to be scared, apparently. Mm. Yeah, I liked being scared when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I'm like, yeah, I'm watching an R-rated movie. Oh, look, there's boobs. And oh, God, it's got blood all over it. <laughs> uh, the Italian job? Um, hmm. The thing is, I actually didn't mind the remake of that. Yeah, me either. It was the one with uh, Mark Wahlberg, and it was actually pretty clever. There was some clever stuff that happened in it. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, obviously, anything with Michael Caine is awesome. So the first one was was you know probably superior if you want to get down to it, but you know the second one not bad, not bad, but could have been a lot worse. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Moving what do you got? Some what about '80s stuff? Well, Get Carter, by the way, awful movie. Yeah, I just passed that one. Yeah, and with this, uh, Sylvester Stallone. Oh my God, that was awful. Uh, did you see the Evil Dead remake? Bits and pieces. Yeah, I really haven't seen much of it either. I it it's. Ah, uh, how do I describe it? Um, now it's been described by it was it was actually produced by Sam Raimi and Rob Tappert and Bruce Campbell, mm -hmm. and they said that this is the movie they would have loved to have made if they'd had the budget originally. Yeah, and I can see where they're talking about that, but at the same time, there's a certain charm to the original Evil Dead. Exactly that that we're gonna you know I've got a I've got a, a paint bucket I've got a tent let's put on a show kind of thing. Exactly, and the, this one is very slick and very bloody and not really that much fun. Oh, I just saw a picture of the rock, and that just lodged dislodged a memory. Oh, big trouble, in little China? <laughs> no, not even close. Okay. Escape to which mountain? Oh God! <laughs> yes, that's oh, been remade. Fuck that. That's been remade twice, actually. Yeah, the original's just fine. The original was Fucking fine. Leave it alone. Then there was like a Disney Channel, uh, the Disney Sunday movie that they remade back in the nineties, involving purple children, which I thought was hilarious. That was the first time I ever heard, ever heard time I ever heard the term purple children. Are you familiar with that idea at all? No, I don't. It's a new age crap. Basically, that there's a, some kid, some people are what they consider the next generation or the next evolution in, in humanity. They, you know, they're they called the purple kid, purple children. They totally have psychic powers and can do things far above and beyond what normal human beings can do, and it's just a bunch of bullshit. Bunch of hippie crap, hu tree hugging, crystal gazing, incense snorting bullshit. <laughs> but yeah, that's. Oh, which then leads me on to. What the fuck, Disney? <laughs> what the actual fuck is wrong with you? Disney is very bad at providing brand new content, apparently. I mean, they have they have no new brand, con brand they have no new content. No. Until they decided to do, until we said decided to do a big uh, oh my god I hadn't even thought about that. But oh, you shit, know what? you know what's gonna happen. What what? A couple of years down the road, maybe 2019 2020. Kim Possible the movie. I can dig it. Actually, that one I would I would actually go and see. Yeah. Because it's. A property that they did on TV. Mm -hmm. They squeezed out a, a direct-to-video movie. Two of them, I think. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. But it's an interesting concept. Mm. And, yeah, that one I can deal with. Or Phineas and Ferb. I... Or Gravity Falls. Actually, Gravity Falls is very good. Gargoyles. Oh, fuck yes. If they did a Gargoyles movie. And did it right? I... Yes. I would see that. I would see ten of them. <laughs> exactly. That's the kind of stuff I would give them money for. Mm-hmm. And see, there's, so, there are properties out there that actually would be really cool to see remade. Exactly. No, but the thing is, they just keep trying to make this live-action stuff. Yeah. And um, then there's, like, the, the A-Team remake and Miami Vice 
I liked the A team. A team was ridiculous. That's the point. It was a little too ridiculous for me. Eh. Then again, I, I, I like... wouldn't mind seeing a. a li- I've seen the uh, the live action remake of Dukes of Hazard with John William Scott and uh, Johnny Knoxville. Mm. That was pretty bad. Um, let's I see. saw the uh, Knight Rider one. Yeah, the television series. The uh, failed uh, television movie. Yeah, with uh, Val Kilmer as the voice yeah. of Kit. I want to believe, but I can't. You can't believe? I cannot. I I literally cannot even. You cannot even. <laughs> I cannot even. I can odd. Clearly I can odd. But I cannot even. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, there's just... I, I think what we're all coming down here, guys, is... Nostalgia can be fun. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like looking back, and sometimes I'm really excited about new things. I'm excited about the new Star Wars movie, and I'm kind of excited about the new Ghostbusters movie. Um, mm-hmm. But at the same time, when there's a, there are movies that are so perfect, like they're remaking Ben Hur again. Yes, I don't know if it's gonna be a big budget mo- movie or a mini series, but they're rebooting it again, and that is a movie that is so perfect the first time around. Um, yeah, but even then, uh, you can still enjoy Charlton Heston on the on the level of Charlton Heston. Well, yeah, I'm saying that you know Ben Hur was such a perfect movie because of Charlton Heston and and, I, and Charles. I mean, Boyer. like even the original one uh, by Demille. Oh, you mean the uh, the one with uh, Raymond Navarro from the Silent Era? Yeah, yeah, that was a good movie. Mm-hmm. But Ben Hur, the '59 version, was so you know definitive. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, and that's it, another thing is, we I don't think we'd ever re- could ever remake Star Wars like we were talking before because it was such a definitive version. Exactly. And to try to remake it again would be a blasphemy against you know the, the filmmakers and against the the actors mm-hmm. and against the fans. I mean, right. If they read it again, they you know obviously the special effects would be a lot more exciting. But I don't know. In, in a world where we're so saturated with CGI, yeah, I don't think it'd be all that exciting anymore. Well, I, guess I gotta give mad props to J.J. Abrams. He's already said that he's doing as much of the Force Awakens with practical effects as the original films were. Yeah. And the fact is, how many times on the show since the last couple of weeks, I have been going off about how much I love Mad Max: Fury Road. Exactly. Because it used practical effects. Um, here's one. Okay. Flubber. Robin Williams. Yes. Yep, the original starred Fred McMurray, and I actually quite enjoyed it. It was called uh, The Absent Mind Professor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's a sequel to it. Yeah, I can't remember the name Son of it. Son of Flubber. Son of Flubber, right. And it had uh, uh, Tommy Kirk as uh, a character in the uh, uh, Fred McMurray. Though, the funny thing is, is Tommy Kirk always looked like Will Wheaton to me. <laughs> <laughs> he does! You take a look at the two. It's like, Damn! Lyle Wagner's a total jerk, second only to Tommy, Tommy Kirk. Kirk. <laughs> Could you find it in your heart to love a bot like me? Da, da, da. That fishy story you tell. Oh, sorry. You're having an MST3K flashback, huh? Yeah, that <laughs> happens. A lot. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> let's see. What? Other, give me another re- bad remake. Uh, the Haunting. The Haunting. Oh, God. Yeah, that was really bad. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Or uh, Clash of the Titans. Yeah, I saw that one, too. Leave Harryhausen alone. Yes, no... Never touch Harryhausen. It will fucking burn you. (laughs) He was done perfectly the first time, you know? Exactly. Uh, Don't do it. Don't do it. Stay away from Clash of the Titans. Stay away from anything Ray Harryhausen. Don't do the Beast from... from, uh, 20 million miles to Venus. Don't do uh, Earth versus the Flying Saucers. We're, oh, mm-hmm. here's another one. Uh, the Day the Earth Stood Still with, Ke- with Keanu Reeves. That was bad. Yeah. So, anyway. It is running about 1 o'clock, and we're supposed to be getting a major storm in here in about 15, 20 minutes. Yep. So why don't we go ahead and do our shit that should... Our, our Thou Shalt Not. Yes. And since we, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and just do our, re, our our original one we did for the original uh, Lost episode. Sounds like sounds like a good one to me. Bad casting choices. Mm-hmm. Uh, Paul Rubens as Ben Hur. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> can you figure out why Jesus died? I can give you a hint. <laughs> well, I know you are, but what am I? You're oh. evil. <laughs> Oh god, that that pains me. Yep. Oy. 
Uh, let's see. Will Smith as, uh... Will, Sl- Will Smith in a remake of The Absent Mind of Professor. You? <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I like Will Smith. I, 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 I like a bit of Will Smith, but... You? <laughs> um, let's see. Marlon Wayans as Shaft. Ew. <laughs> uh, let's see. <coughs> uh, let's see. Sarah Michelle Geller as... Oh, God. Who was that? Anti-Mame. <laughs> 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 oh. Sorry, I had to steal that one from you. <laughs> that's fair, that's fair. Um, let's see. Uh, well, we did Will Ferrell as Blade. Um, mm. Let's do Will Ferrell as uh, George Washington. In now, what? Uh, the Tick. I don't know. <laughs> How about George okay, Wa- I kind of like to see a live action uh, Tick movie. Yeah. You know. Anyway, uh, I just had one. Mm. Betty White as uh, Mrs. Voorhees. See, the thing is, I can see that. Yeah, You ever but see still. Uh, Lake Placid? No. Uh, she plays a, a rather violent old lady in that. Hmm. Foul mouth, too. It was rather amusing. Or, or Angela Lansbury. Oh, Angela Lansbury as, my, as, lady, as Mrs. Voorhees? That yeah. would be terrifying. That would be... Oof. That would break the internet. <laughs> Fuck Kim Kardashian's ass. I didn't mean it that way. Anyway. <laughs> I know you didn't. Uh, I don't want to be anywhere where Kanye West has been. <sighs> oh, God. Speaking of Kanye West. Oh, no. <sighs> Kanye West as Buddy the Elf. Uh, I'm the greatest elf of all time, of all time. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Um, Gonna name drop Santa here. <laughs> um. Snoop Dogg as John Stewart Green Lantern. They've never done that one before. <laughs> no. <laughs> They've never done John Stewart Green Lantern in a live action situation. I'd like to have see that happen. In yeah. fact, my dream casting for that one is Tay Diggs. I can see that. I'd like to see Tay Diggs as Jon Stewart. That would be cool, but not Snoop Dogg. No. (laughs) Rappers are like wrestlers in the 80s. You can cast them, but it's going to be a novelty one-off. You're never going to see your money back. It's a crapshoot whether they're going to be good or not. I mean, Ice Cube, fantastic in Boys in the Hood. Not so good in Ghosts on Mars. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's see... uh... Bill Cosby as anything. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I know, low blow, but still. Uh, Bill Cosby is Erwin Rommel. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. Um, let's see. I was watching something with Dick Tracy earlier. Let's see. Let's find the worst person I can possibly think of for Dick Tracy. Wallace Adam Shawn. Sandler. Wallace Shawn as Dick Tracy. I don't know. I'm still going to stand by Adam Sandler. That would be pretty bad. That would be pretty horrifying. That would be really horrifying. I hate you. You just put that idea in my head, and I can see him wearing the fedora and the jacket. Oh, you bastard! <laughs> uh, I win! I broke you first! Uh, I was hearing him saying, you know, you know, hands up in the Adam Sandler's voice. It's just not working. It's it's making me hurt. <laughs> Only once Adam Sandler has, oh my has God. broken... <laughs> Dick Tracy. All right then, will I give you permission to die? <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, um, find someone for the shadow. Someone for the. Because I know sh- you're thinking it. Yep, yeah, the shadow, huh? Um, Bill Cosby as the shadow. <laughs> Kevin James. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine him like you know stuffed in that big suit with the with the cape and the long hat and. Mm. That is, that makes my soul feel unclean. Yay! Either that or I have an ulcer. I'm not sure. Hmm. All right. <sighs> Shall we end on that? I think so. All right, guys. <coughs> well, thank you so much for joining us on our. How many episodes are we in now? 
Uh, 27. Damn. Uh, we mm-hmm. might, now we're hoping not to, but we might have to take a break later this summer because my, my illustrious co-host is going to be taking a soul-searching trip across the United States. Yep. I'll be hitting Chicago, Memphis, St. Louis, New Orleans, uh, Washington, D.C., Baltimore, uh, Red Bank, New Jersey, clearly oh. for reasons. You're actually going to Red Bank? I'm going to Red Bank. Rock on. Uh, New York City, of course. New York, Buffalo, New York. New York. It's a hell of a town. The cabs and then stop. I'll be coming. And then down. I'll be coming back home. Yep. And going to school for film studies. Yep. And we'll have to work on a script at some point. Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, I guess that's it. So yeah, from all of us here at Radioactive Walrus Entertainment, the uh, I almost said the recording closet. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the experiment room and Dan's domicile. Dan's house, where he wears no pants. No pants, sir. No pants, man. Anyway, uh, this has been Late Night Taco Delivery. Thank you for listening. You may now place your order. Late Night Taco Delivery is performed by Daniel Gill and Jonathan Knoll and was created by Daniel Gill. New Bizarre Opening by Jonathan Knoll. If you have questions, comments, or a suggestion for a future show, drop us a line at, on Twitter at, at Radio Walrus Pod. Like Radioactive Walrus Entertainment on our Facebook, or subscribe to our official YouTube channel, Radioactive Walrus. That's Radioactive with a capital R, Walrus with a capital W, and no spaces. Thank you for calling Late Night Talk Delivery. You may now place your orders. This has been a production of Radioactive Walrus Entertainment. John, what do chickens say? <laughs>